Hi, my name is Dan Hammer, and in this short video, I'm going to help you understand what causes the majority of pain associated with sickle cell anemia. What you're looking at is a picture of a normal red blood cell and a sickle-shaped red blood cell. When everything is working properly, the normal red blood cell is what travels through your bloodstream. Under certain conditions, this normal red blood cell will change shape and become the sickle cell you see on the right. When this happens, these sickle cells take on some uniquely different properties which cause problems in circulation. First, they lose their ability to produce nitric oxide, which we'll discuss in greater detail in our next video. Second, they become sticky, which causes them to cling to the walls of the arterioles and capillaries. What you see is a rough drawing of a section of your cardiovascular system. The artery narrows down to become an arteriole, which narrows down to become a capillary. The nice oval shape of a red blood cell easily passes through this narrowing channel. However, when the red blood cell changes from oval to sickle, it gets stuck, partly due to shape change, but mainly because the sickle cell becomes sticky and attaches itself to the wall of the blood vessel. Let me demonstrate this. To show you what happens, I've taken two different tube socks and sewn them together. The larger tube sock represents the arteriole, and the smaller one represents the capillary. This apple represents a normal red blood cell, and if I drop it down through the tube sock, you'll notice that it easily passes through the larger tube sock, but slows down and passes through the smaller tube sock. Now, when the red blood cell changes to its sickle shape, it looks similar to this banana. Watch what happens when I drop it down through the tube sock. You'll notice that it easily passes through the larger portion of the sock, but it gets stuck in the smaller portion of the sock. This blockage interferes with blood flow. Reduced blood flow reduces the amount of oxygen to your tissues and organs. Let's look at a picture of an artery and its branches so that you can see how this relates to pain. In this picture, I'm showing you an artery that branches off into arterioles which branch off into capillaries. Let's start at the capillary level. This is where oxygen is exchanged so that your tissues can create energy. When oxygen is used, it's called aerobic respiration. This allows your cells to create the greatest amount of energy, and the waste products are water and carbon dioxide. Your red blood cells pick up the carbon dioxide and carry it to your lungs, which you breathe out. Everything is working great. When the oval-shaped red blood cells change to their sickle shape, they get stuck. This reduces blood flow. This reduces oxygen to the tissue. This reduces aerobic respiration, so your cell converts to anaerobic respiration. Think of anaerobic respiration as energy production without oxygen. Two things happen. Less energy is produced, so you're tired. And one of the waste products is lactic acid. This irritates the surrounding tissue, causing pain. Since circulation is reduced, it lingers to continue to irritate the tissue so the pain remains. Depending upon the size of the blockage and its location will determine the amount of pain and its severity to your body. If the blockage occurs in a capillary, only a small amount of tissue is affected, so you only have a small or mild amount of pain. If the blockage occurs in an arterial, then a larger amount of tissue is affected, so you have greater pain. If the blockage occurs in an artery, then an even larger amount of tissue is affected and you have extreme pain, which can also cause permanent damage to tissue and organs. Researchers at Duke University and Howard Hughes Medical Institute demonstrated that when nitric oxide was administered to sickle cell patients in pain, their pain was substantially reduced. We'll look at this in our next video because nitric oxide production is key in helping to reduce the pain associated with sickle cell anemia.